Hey guys, today we got some pretty nasty weather out here. So before the rain, I wanted to go ahead and grab all the greens from the garden. Um, they're starting to kind of stop growing as well. And it's almost time for us to pull this up and get ready for our spring gardening. So I'm gonna get all the greens and we're gonna can them up. Let's go get them. All right, I'm gonna start here with my collards. This is my first planting of collards right here. And I'm just gonna put them in this laundry basket here. Uh, and I'm just going to break them off at the bottoms. I don't want the whole stems, so I'm just going to get the leaf part and then I'll make it a little easier. And then I'll just bring these all inside and wash them and destem them. And then I'll cook them down with some ham hocks and some ham and then we'll jar them up and we'll be to have these in the middle of the summer when we get tired of green beans and zucchini. I'm going to leave a couple of the middle leaves because it might continue growing and see what we get before we need to pull all this up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get all my leaves here. I also decided I'm going to go ahead and pull all of these here to get ready for um, to plant some sweet potatoes in a month or so, give the soil some time to rest. So I have, this is all radishes here, and then I have some turnip greens and collards here. So I'm going to pull all these out and harvest the greens to go with all the other greens I'm getting today. All right, so I'll go ahead and these are really big. I probably should have pulled these a long time ago. So I'm just gonna get as much dirt off as I can. And look at those beautiful greens. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all these out. See, some of them are small, but like, I don't know. It is what it is. I do have one really awesome turnip I wanted to show you guys. I mean, look at that guy. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these out with both hands. All right, the last green I'm gonna grab today to add into all my greens, I'm gonna can are my Brussels sprout leaves. Um, I already started getting some little sprouts in there. So what I need to do is take off all these bottom leaves to give them some space to grow. And it will put more energy into the sprouts themselves instead of all the greens. And then what I'm gonna do is take off the top here. So I'll take it off about right here, these little stems in here, and take off that whole top there. And that will have it to finish putting um, all the effort into my sprouts here. So I'm just gonna cut these leaves off like this, all around the bottom. And I'll leave maybe like three rows of greens here, just so the plant won't die. And I'll pick all these up and we can eat all these just like collard greens and stuff. And then I can use all of these greens to eat. And these will taste even a little better since they're nice and tender young greens. All right, so I'm gonna do that to all of these. All right, so I finished getting all of my collards here, my radishes, turnips, and collards that were in there. And this is all of the turnips and radishes and their greens that I got. And then here is the laundry basket full of collards and just a few broccoli leaves that the rabbit didn't eat that I grabbed. And that box I got some cabbage and carrots. I'm gonna make some coleslaw in a different video. But, all right, so I gotta go unload all of this so I can go bring on all those Brussels sprout greens. About to start raining, so I need to hurry. All right, you guys, I have got my work cut out for me today. So this basket here is all of the Brussels sprout leaves that I grabbed off of the bottoms and the tops. Then here I have all of my radishes and turnips and I, I do have a cabbage and um, some carrots underneath there somewhere. And this whole thing here is the collard greens. Just pile all of these up on top of here and then I'll just wash through and as I wash through, I'll put them in my dining room table on a couple of different towels and then I'll start in there. I can sit down and start destemming all of these and then all the stems and stuff will go to my pigs. Wow, you guys, how blessed am I on getting all of this from the garden? And I mean, a couple of years ago, I would have just thrown all of this into the compost. I wouldn't have eaten these. I wouldn't have even known. So I'm thankful for all the knowledge that's out there on YouTube and on the internet that can kind of teach us these things that we never even knew we could use. So I guess I better get going.
All right, guys, I got all my greens washed and put them here on the table. Um, this pile right here is all of the turnip greens and the radish greens. Then I have here all of my collards, and here's all of my Brussels sprouts. So now I gotta sit down and de-stem them. All right, so these are all our bags that we got from all those greens. This one here is the radish and turnip greens. And then one, two, three bags full of the Brussels sprout greens and collard greens. And then this one is all of the stems that we pulled off of everything. Thank goodness my husband jumped in and helped me when he got home from work and we finished it up. Hey guys, today we're gonna finish up these greens. Yesterday I got them all out of the garden, washed them and descend them. And so now today we're gonna cook them and get them in the canner. So right here I have set up all of my bags. I'm gonna wash the turnip green bags one more time. I think it's this one here. Uh, they had a little bit of extra dirt on them. So what I'm gonna do is I got my water bath canner out here. I'm just gonna use it as a pot because it's my biggest pot I have. So I'm gonna measure out how many greens I have and that will depend on how much other stuff and water I put into my pot. So for every eight to 10 cups, you put so much, you know, garlic, water, etc. So what I'm gonna do first is go ahead and get these measured out in my pot and see how much other stuff I need to add. Okay, so this is my first time doing this many greens at one time. So what I ended up doing is taking a lot of those greens out of here. I went ahead and measured everything out and it equals 12 batches. And I'm so lucky, I just got this this morning at the flea market. It's this huge plastic tub. It's got a cute little picture of like some peppers or something in it there. So I put all of my greens in there, and plus I have one little bag left. So what I'm doing now is I got some water going in my electric kettle, and I just poured quite a bit in here. I didn't even measure. I don't think it really matters because you're going to be draining this once it's done. So what I'm doing is just kind of um, wilting them as I go and then adding in an extra handful at a time. All right, so I ended up getting all of my greens in my pot. I basically just stood here and just pushed them all down so you can see the water is up to about here so you want your greens to be you know in the water um, I had a little bit of frozen onion I defrosted a little bit that's probably two onions worth and um, now I have all of my ham hocks that I've saved from Christmas and Thanksgiving and we buy um, half hams for our lunch meat and I slice it so we don't have to buy like deli lunch meat so these are all of the ham hocks that I have saved and all the onions. So I'm gonna let this all come up to a simmer and then I'm going to let this go for 20 minutes and then we'll drain all this and add our chicken broth and seasonings and then we'll... Okay guys, I have my greens boiling on the stove right now. They're almost ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the sauce ready. So this calls for two teaspoons of brown sugar per recipe. So I asked my little device that knows all, and that equals out to half a cup. So I'm gonna do is do half a cup of brown sugar. I'm assuming it's packed. And that also is half a cup of apple cider vinegar, or you can use white vinegar. I just found this recipe on um, YouTube, actually. It was called Boots and Bounty. And I think 1980s Homestead also just does something pretty similar. All right, so that's half a cup of apple cider vinegar. And it says two teaspoons of salt per recipe, so that'll be also half a cup. I'm using pink Himalayan salt here. Since we're canning this, you do not want to use iodized salt. This is not iodized. I'll probably do a scant half a cup there because you can always add more salt later. And it says three teaspoons of garlic. So of course, which is also just about half a cup. So I'm just gonna eyeball that, probably do a little bit less than half a cup of garlic. Like I said, we can always add these seasonings again later after we open it. Okay, so I got brown sugar, vinegar, garlic, and salt. So this is all the flavoring that we're gonna add. And I got out four quarts of my chicken broth that I made in August. 
So I'm gonna drain my big pot. I'm not gonna film it because it's so huge. I think that it probably won't be very pretty. So I'm gonna drain the pot. I'm gonna leave the ham hocks and the onions and all of that in. Then I'm gonna add in my chicken broth and all of my seasonings here. I'm gonna mix this first. And then I'm gonna add all my seasonings and then that will cook for another 20 minutes altogether. All right, I got all my spices and my four quarts of chicken broth in there. Looks like just about the right amount of liquid to add. Kind of just guessed. Um, but what I'll do is go ahead and bring this up to a boil and then simmer it for 20 minutes. And then when it's done, I'll go ahead and take all the ham hocks out and take off any meat that's on there. Then I'll put it back in the pot. And then um, while this is going, I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my pint sized jars ready. I'm gonna do this in pints and get my pressure canner out and warming up. All right guys, we're ready to go ahead and can this up. Uh, there wasn't much meat on those ham bones that I had in here. Um, so I just pulled those out and I had a little bit of ham in my refrigerator that actually came from those ham hocks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, I went ahead and just put a little bit of that in just to give it a little bit of flavor, maybe about a cup of ham, not much. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill it up. I got all my jars ready. I'm canning these in pints. Um, so I'll just see how much I get in here. I have 13 jars, I think. Okay, so now I got all my stuff together. I'm gonna pan these in pints. So I'm just gonna start filling them in with the greens. If I find like a little piece of fat or something, I'll probably go ahead and pull it out. You don't really wanna to can too much fat. I really did not expect to get this many greens out of this. Usually, you know, they cook down so much. You don't wanna tap it down too tight here. Um, just gently loosely pack it. And this will be up to an inch of headspace. And then we'll top it off with some of the broth that's in my pot. And if I have any leftover broth, then what I'll do is I will just use it in a soup. This will fill all the spaces there. Up to one inch headspace, that's the line right here, this lowest rip. All right now, we want to debubble. You want to make sure you do this really well. That way, when you're canning it, um, the temperature isn't different in the center if you have this too tightly packed. All right, and then you want to double check your headspace so I can add a little bit extra broth. Then my taper towel with the vinegar. Wipe around the rim. I already checked all of these rims as I washed them with a clean lid and ring. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of these and I'll let you know how many get. All right guys, so I got nine pints in my canner. But I still have quite a bit of uh, greens to go. So what I'm gonna do is double stack. I've never done this before, um, but what you just do is you just do another whole layer. So you just put a separating ring right there, then you put your next round right on top. So I'll be able to do all of this in one round since they're all pints. Awesome. All right, you guys, so I had just a little bit left. Um, it probably would have been enough to maybe fill half a pint jar there, plus all the broth. So I'll just plan on using that this week sometime for our dinners. So I have a full can. I've never done this before. This is exciting. So I have nine pints on the bottom, and then I have seven pints on the top. Now, these are wide mouth ones, so they take up a little more space. That's why I got a little bit more on the bottom because I used... Um, narrow mouths or regular mouths jars. All right, so I'm not gonna go into details on how to pressure can this time around. If you'd like to take a look at my tomato sauce video, I go more into depth on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these going and they'll go for 75 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. All right, I got all my jars out. There was a little bit of siphoning in my pot, I noticed, and it kind of made some of my jars look, the lids and rings look a little nasty, but uh, we'll see if they all seal. This is my first time canning greens like this before, so I hope they turn out good. I tasted a little bit from the pot and they were delicious. So this will be a great side dish to serve up in the summertime, just to change it up a little bit. I hope you guys try this.